It's very timely for the situation that we're in. Senseless war. I noticed at the back they're also turning the pages. So by the way, sister, this is page 139 to the sister who was seated next to me at the back. One of the usual gifts I would receive as a kid was a toy gun. I remember my uncle giving me not just one, but two. It had a strap with two holsters like those worn by cowboys, which can be attached around your waist. The moment I saw it as I opened my gift, I was ecstatic. I fantasized that I was that I were Fernando Poe Jr. or Lito Lapid, shooting bad guys left and right, or a cowboy battling a bunch of rough-looking Indians. My toy gun became my priceless possession. I had a special place to hide it so that my little sister, my little sister would not know where to find it. Sometimes I would even put them under my pillow before I sleep to make sure nobody stole them. As a kid, I grew up believing that boys should be courageous and unafraid to fight. Guns should be their toys so that they get used to handle them and learn to shoot using their imagination. The machismo image is ever dominant in our culture. How many times would I play war games with my friends? The luthang or the bamboo gun was then our favorite sport. We would romanticize war, thinking how challenging and adventurous it would be to be actually in a real war. Today, I realize that those innocent skirmishes actually initiated us into the mentality of war and violence. In reality, war is a horrible thing. I am just thankful that we have never experienced such a tragedy. I had a first had exposure to her speech. I had a first had exposure of the cruelty and brutality of violence when I was in Israel from 1993 to 1997. I studied theology in the land of Jesus. It is a very beautiful and wonderful land, but it is a place deep in contradiction. Our seminary was in Krebisan, situated on a mountain with a scenic vista of the new city of Jerusalem. It was at the southern border of the city quite near an Israeli settlement which they called Kibbutz. I know I'm not sure if I pronounce it correctly. And near the West Bank, we were just six kilometers away from Bethlehem, the birthplace of Jesus. When I came to Israel, the Intifada or the Palestinian Arab uprising against Israel was still going on. The situation was relatively peaceful though. The Palestinians were poor, much poorer than us. They could not afford to even buy toy guns. So their kids play with stones. When they get angry against Israeli, Israeli policies, they ventilate by throwing stones at them. The most that they could do to inflict bigger casualties was to attach explosives or grenades in their bodies and blow themselves up in buses that ply along a busy section of the city or into a crowded mall. Of course, this would happen only once in a while. There was constant vigilance and there were always soldiers everywhere. Israeli kids, when they turned 18, are required to join two years of military service. It is a common thing to see a young teenager carrying an Uzi or M16 in the street while patrolling or as border police. For Israel, peace is an elusive dream. They are constantly paying a very expensive price for it up to now. There were, there were brave efforts to establish a long and lasting peace among its Arab neighbors. Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, a war hero turned soldier for peace, forged a peace agreement with PLO Chairman Yasser Arafat, which culminated in that historic handshake in September 1993 at the White House in Washington, D.C. After years of fighting and bloodshed, they finally took a different road to risk for peace. They were eventually awarded the Nobel Prize in 1994 for peace as both sides believed that the time for peace has come. The peace agreement with Jordan would also follow, but an unfortunate event would again put the prize, would again put the peace process to a standstill. During a peace rally attended by more than 100,000, Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin would be assassinated 
by a, by a Jewish student in King Square, Tel Aviv, after speaking before the vast crowd about the difficulty of peace. Minutes before he was shot, he sang the song of peace. This incident shocked the nation and brought an avalanche of condolences from the international community. Today, Israel is at war again with Hezbollah and Lebanon. In other parts of the world, we hear of violence and bloodshed. Even in our very midst, we witness death and salvaging. The culture of violence is played on and on. When will this music stop? When will the time of peace come? The words of Elie Wiesel, an Israeli Nobel Peace Prize awardee in 1986, is worth reflecting. None of us is in a position to eliminate war, but it is our obligation to denounce it and expose it in all its hideousness. War leaves no victors, only victims. Mankind must remember that peace is not God's gift to his creatures. It is our gift to each other. Thank you very much.